In this tutorial, we're going to begin to look at different ways that we can represent data. Now, what we're looking at here is discrete data. And by discrete data, I mean it has an exact value. So we've got a survey here which represents a car share traffic survey. So basically what's happened is someone has conducted a survey by the side of the road and counted the number of people in each vehicle as they pass. And they've produced a tally. So because this is discrete data, each car can either have one person, two, three, four or five people in the vehicle. We can't have one and a half people, for example, or we can't have three and a quarter people. We only have full numbers of people, which is what we mean by discrete data. I'm sure you're aware with how a tally works, but basically when you're trying to collate data, and this is generally if you're doing it in real time and you don't have very long to count or collect data, you would use a tally system. So with a tally system, you have four vertical lines, one, two, three, four, for the first four instances. And then for the fifth instance, you have a horizontal line running through the four vertical lines. So here on the top line, we've got 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 26, 27 cars with just one person in. For vehicles with two people in, we've got 5, 10, 15, 16, 17, 18 vehicles. And vehicles with three people in, we've got 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Vehicles with four people in, we have four of those. And vehicles with five people in, we have two of those. So in total, during this traffic survey, 60 cars have passed. And in each of those cars, we've either had one, two, three, four, or five people. What we're looking at on the screen here is called a frequency table. Because what it shows is each of our data and the frequency or the number of times that a specific event has occurred. So in 27 instances, cars have passed with only one person. There have been 18 instances of cars with two people and so on. So this is a frequency table. Now what we're going to do first of all in this video is we're going to take that frequency table and we're going to represent it in two different ways. We're going to represent it as a bar chart and then we're going to represent it as a frequency polygon. So what we have on the screen here, first of all on the left hand side is the frequency table that we just produced. And on the right hand side we have our set of axes that are set up ready to plot our bar chart and our frequency polygon. Now on the x-axis we have numbers ranging 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that represents our number of people in each vehicle, which I'm going to call lowercase n. And on the y-axis we have our frequency ranging from 0 to 32. And I'm going to use a lowercase f to represent our frequency. When we plot a bar chart, what we need to do is we need to produce a bar for each of those pieces of data where the height of the bar represents the frequency. Now it's really important to be clear, it's the height of the bar that represents the frequency because when we look at various other methods of representing data, that isn't always the case. But for a bar chart, the height of the bar represents the frequency. So we see from our data that we have 27 instances of vehicles with just one person in. So we need a bar at a height of 27. Just going to plot the first couple of these and then I'll point out some other key features of this particular bar chart. And generally we would shade in each of our bars. So my second piece of data, I'm going to change colours for this is vehicles with two people and there were 18 of those. So this time I need a bar of a height 18 to represent vehicles with two people. Once again, I'm going to shade that. Okay, so let's plot another one. We've got vehicles with three people in, and there were nine instances of those. A 
Okay, now just before I plot my last couple of pieces of data, I want to point out a couple of key things here. First of all, you'll notice that there's a gap between each of the bars. And it's really important when we do a bar chart to maintain that gap, especially when we're representing discrete data. Because what we're trying to show here is that each of these pieces of data are unrelated. So vehicles with one person in is completely unrelated to vehicles with two people in and so on. It's discrete data. If these two bars here were joined, for example, it might imply that we have vehicles with anywhere between half a person and one and a half people, and of those there are 27. And then we might have vehicles with one and a half people to two and a half people, and of those there are 18. So we have to be really careful that we represent this as discrete data, rather than what we're going to move on to later, which is continuous data. So we always maintain a gap between our bars there. So let's move on and plot our last two pieces of data. We have vehicles with four people in, and there were four of those. So vehicles with four people, and we've got four of those. And then finally, vehicles with five people in. And we have just two of those. There's just one thing missing from this before the bar chart is complete, and what we're missing is a title. Now it's really important that you choose a title that tells you something about the data, or something about the set of data that you're representing. So in here, I'm going to call this Car Share Traffic Survey. Car Share Traffic Survey Data. Next I'm going to go on to plot my frequency polygon. Now a lot of what we have on the page there is still relevant because we're still plotting the number of people in a vehicle against the frequency and our title is still applicable, car share traffic data. All we're doing is we're representing the data in a different way. So I'm going to clear my bars off of there and I'm going to begin plotting my frequency polygon. Well first of all when we plot a frequency polygon we're going to plot the number of people in each vehicle against the frequency but we're going to represent that as a point on the graph. Essentially what we're plotting is a line graph as you'll see in a moment. So vehicles with one person in, there were 27 instances of those. Vehicles with two people in, there were 18 instances of those. Vehicles with three people in, there were nine of those. Vehicles with four people in, there were four of those. And vehicles with five people in, there were two of those. Now to complete our frequency polygon, what we're going to do is join those points together. So first of all, we can join our first two points. Then we can go on and join our second two points. And so on. Down to the bottom of our data. So what we have there is a perfectly appropriate frequency polygon. What you can do to show that this is an isolated set of data is we can specify the number of cars with zero people in was zero, and the number of cars with six people in, well six would be up here, the number of cars with six people in was also zero. And then what we can do is close off this polygon and show that what we have is a complete set of isolated data. Now this step here is optional, so either with or without these last two points added would still be an appropriate frequency polygon. And there we have our completed frequency polygon to represent our car share traffic survey data.